The Shah B isn't really spoken about as one of the best tanks of the Second World War. It's never really mentioned alongside vehicles such as the Tiger, the Panther, the T-34 or the Sherman. It's a vehicle that is absolutely colossal when you stood next to it, and when compared to German tanks of the Blitzkrieg, it's an extremely different design. It's known for being one of the most powerfully armed and well protected tanks of its time during the early stages of the Second World War in 1940, during the Battle of France. However, it's also known to be extremely slow and heavy, and also as a rather poor vehicle for fuel consumption. What's interesting though about the Char B is that many of these vehicles that were captured throughout the fall of France were actually requisitioned into the occupying German army. Today we look at the French Char B tank, and how it was pressed into service with the Wehrmacht and the German Panzer divisions. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Char B followed similar design principles as First World War tanks, and you can certainly see some similarities with the vehicles that were created for trench warfare. This style of warfare was very much in the minds of those French developers who worked on it. The designing stage of the Char B began in the early 1920s, shortly after World War I, and it did take a number of years to be manufactured. It was made by several firms including Renault, and it was incredibly expensive to build, costing around 1.5 million French francs per vehicle. It would weigh in at around 28 tonnes, and it was rather slow, with a maximum road speed of just 17 miles per hour. The Blitzkrieg tactics of lightning warfare deeply exposed the Char B's slow speed of just 30 miles per hour over countryside, and it was extremely unsuitable for this fast-paced warfare. It was equipped with a 75mm howitzer armament in the forward hull, which allowed only elevation, and in the turret a 47mm gun was installed. The one-man turret was a bit of a flaw, as the commander had to command the tank, but also communicate with other tanks, and also load, aim and fire the 47mm gun. The commander was also isolated from the rest of the crew. The Char B series had armour protection of 40mm, but the B1 BIS variant would have 60mm thick armour. Its armour was quite good for the early conflict, but weak points were found and exploited by the Germans. The Germans following the fall of France and their success with the Blitzkrieg would find themselves with two factories that built the Char B1 BIS, the Renault factory in Boulogne Billancourt and an AMX factory. In January 1941, the Renault factory fell under the control of Daimler-Benz, and before October of that year, 150 Renault 32 tanks, as they were now known by the Germans, were repaired and restored. During some of these repairs to the Char B, the Germans would cut off the commander's cupola, and also would change radios and antennas. The French tanks were then rebranded with German names, with the Char B1 and B1 BIS becoming the Panzerkampfwagen B1 BIS 740F but most were just known as the Panzerkampfwagen B2. German crews were slightly unsure on the Char B. The tanks captured in Czechoslovakia and converted, such as the Panzer 38T, fit perfectly into German tank philosophy and tactics, but the Char B didn't, being slow and sluggish. The Char B was a vehicle with extremely powerful armour at the time, but the Germans didn't really know what to do with it. A plan, however, was devised, and that was to heavily modify the vehicle and turn the Char B, or the Panzer B2, into a flamethrower. Flamethrowing vehicles were a key weapon of war and assault, and drafts were made to convert the French tank into one of these. Hitler himself chose a variant with a Hall flamethrower, and the company chosen, Wegmann & Co, adapted the tank to mount a flamethrower to its chassis. They removed the 75mm gun and replaced it with a flamethrower that had a rather wide range, and the first vehicle was ready in May 1941. 60 of these vehicles became flamethrowers, known as the Flamwagen Alf Panzerkampfwagen B2F. Other vehicles were pressed into service as second line vehicles in the German army, and also as training vehicles for the crews to practice driving a heavy tank. Some were often also used as turretless supply vehicles, and 16 of these were converted into 105mm self propelled artillery, armed with 105mm LEF H18 light howitzer. So the Char B inside the German army had a rather varied role, and was heavily modified for different purposes, but how did they do in combat service? Many of the flamethrower vehicles were sent to the 102nd Flamethrower Battalion, but due to issues with production, the tank entered service at different times. Regular Char B tanks were used as command tanks, and the flamethrowers were split up into four platoons of three vehicles. The battalion was reassigned to the 295th Infantry, and whilst attacking a Polish area, the tanks were plagued with technical issues. The attack using the flamethrowers ended badly, as it turned out that the fire could not penetrate the pillboxes, 
Two of these vehicles were then knocked out and set on fire when the pillbox returned fire. Because of this, the vehicles were then sent back to be adjusted. The 223rd Captured Tank Company would also in 1942 use Sharpies and would take part in an assault on Sevastopol. History tended to repeat itself as issues on board the Char B were caused by the tank becoming three tons heavier after modifications. With regards to how the Howitzer fared in combat, it's not really known. They were received by the 93rd Tank Artillery Regiment, who used the self-propelled guns, but it's assumed that the tank crews were not probably happy with their French vehicles. This variant was incredibly heavy which would have affected reliability, and also this crew made use of the Wesper self-propelled gun, which had the same gun but overall was a much superior designed vehicle. The Panzerkampfwagen B2 on the eastern front proved that the tanks were poorly suited as first line assault vehicles. Their armour and armament was rather good against some Russian tanks, however their speed was a bit of an issue. Further problems would arise following the loss of the repair base following RAF bombing raids and this would affect the amount of repairs that could happen to a Char B. One unit, Panzer Abteilung 213, was equipped with Char B1s and deployed on the Channel Islands between 1941 and 1945. Also some Char B turrets were removed from tanks and were installed on German bunkers defending the Normandy beaches during the time of D-Day. One training unit, Panzer Company 224, was also given several flamethrown Char Bs and was stationed in Arnhem during Operation Market Garden. They would lose six vehicles to anti-tank weapons. Remarkably, a number of French Char Bs would be recaptured by elements of the French resistance forces. Several of these were used on an individual basis and were turned against the German forces during fighting in Paris. They were then used in a number of assaults on French towns to liberate them, for example during the siege of La Rochelle. They were effective in their attacks in April 1945 and they used their 75mm armaments for supporting fire and would also target pillboxes. So although the Char B isn't remembered as one of the greatest tanks of the Second World War, it was utilised by the Germans in a number of different ways. As a flamethrower, a self-propelled gun or as a captured tank, its use didn't really fit the Germans' principles and philosophies on tank warfare. What is amazing though is that the French managed to recapture some of their tanks following the liberation of their country, and also this would have been a huge propaganda boost for the French. By using captured tanks, it did provide the Germans with a numerical advantage, but it's clear that the Char B needed a huge amount of modifications to suit the needs of the Germans. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.